Hi everyone. So I'm presenting the uh, V16 features related to stock and manufacturing model. The first is serial number batch traceability report. So in automobile industry, when a company receives some multiple complaints about their product, they have to first identify a defective batch. Then they have to find which products has used the same batch so that they can recall all the affected products and fix them. So to find this information, serial and batch traceability report plays an important role. So in, uh, in this report, we have a direction filter, which is a backward traceability, which tells you which are the raw materials were used to, uh, produce, a semi uh, to produce a uh, batch or serial number. Also, uh, we have a forward traceability. With this, user will know uh, which batch has used uh, to produce a specific uh, item and where it has been used. Uh, next is the sequential manufacturing. So suppose there is a use case. Uh, let's say you want to use the output of one operation as an input or as a raw material for next operation. And you have one of the operation is a subcontracting. So to handle this use case, currently user has to make a work orders for each operation. And for subcontracting operation, they have to create a subcontracting order. But with this approach, the problem was they have to make a multiple work orders and uh, maintaining all of or tracking all of all of the work orders under a single entity was hard. Also, there was no linking between them. So maintaining a sequence was also hard. So to fix the issue, uh, now we have uh, added a feature in version 16 where user will able to make a stock entry of a manufacturing again the job card. So you don't need to create a multiple work orders just with a single work order. This use this use case will be handled. So to enable this feature, you have to make some configuration in the BOM level. We have to enable the track semi-finished goods as a checkbox, and then you have to map the semi-finished good or the finished good against the operation with the block materials. Our next is a closing stock entry for inventory uh, for a periodic inventory. So in perpetual inventory, when a user submits a stock transaction, system automatically creates the GL entry. But in periodic inventory, user has to compare the stock balance report with the trial balance report find the difference amount, and then make a journal entry to book the accounting uh, transaction. So to automate this, we have introduced a new entry type, uh, which is a periodic accounting uh, entry. And then user has to click on the uh, gate balance, so system will automatically fetch the difference amount. Uh, next is a landing cost for post-manufacturing. So suppose you have manufactured the uh, your finished good in the month, in the mid of the month, and you have received the electricity bill at the end of the month. And now you want to add the cost of the electricity in the valuation of the finished item. So to do that, we never had any option. But in V16, now you will be able to make a landed cost voucher against the manufacturer's stock entry. Similarly, for subcontracting case, suppose you have a fixed transporter who sends the transportation bill at the end of the month and you want to add the transportation cost in the subcontracted item. So to do that, now you will be able to make a landed cost voucher against the subcontracting receipt. Next is the workstation operating component. So in the workstation, the uh, operating components used to be hard-coded, and if user wants to add more components, then they had only option of customization. So to solve this, we have added a child table where user can now able to add dynamic components. Also, user will be able to add a company-wise expense account against each operating component. Our next uh, feature is the MRP. And uh, so story behind the MRP. So uh, none of the customer has asked for this feature because we have a production plan and production plan has the MRV feature, and it covers both make to stock and make to order case. But we, we are constantly hearing from the partner that this is not an ideal MRP. So to understand how uh, MRP works in general, 
me and Deepen have taken a calls with the partners, uh, partners like uh, Weather Solution, Electrons, and few others. And based on their input, uh, we have developed this feature. So to understand uh, the, how material uh, requirement planning works, uh, we came to know that demand planning is important. So for that, we have introduced a master production schedule uh, doc document. And to make a better planning, we required different source of data. So we already have a sales order and the material request, but we never had a sales forecast and the delivery schedules. So we have introduced this feature as well. So based on this source data, user has to make a master production schedule. And after that, they have to run the MRP report. So in the MRP, you will be able to see the uh, available materials uh, along with their required quantity. And this quantity will be calculated based upon the finished good quantity. And we have also introduced the lead time uh, to calculate the release date because we have to make sure that right materials will be available at the right time. Once the MRP is finalized, user will be able to make a purchase order or the work order from the MRP report itself. So that's it, that's it from my side.